What a beautiful prelude to welcome us into worship for this Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, a time to remember that we have all been made God's beloved children through the waters of baptism. And so I invite you today as you join us at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Silver Spring, Maryland, um, for worship today to find a bowl and uh, some water and have it ready for the time that we will um, uh, continue into this worship with the confession and forgiveness. If you go and get that right now, I'll continue with a few brief announcements. Because of the week that we've all experienced here, not only in the Washington DC area, but all across this nation, we decided to continue to show a little bit of Christmas and remind us that we have moved through the time of Epiphany, uh, the celebration of the festival of Epiphany, that we have a God who is a God who keeps making a way and sometimes asking us to go home a different way. And so uh, today we join together in worship and we invite you to uh, bring along a bowl and some water as we continue in this worship with the confession and forgiveness that you'll find on page two of the bulletin. Please join me in pouring this water and making the sign of the cross in remembrance of our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. And now, after a moment of silence, we'll confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Let us pray together. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. And now you're invited to continue to pour water. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen and amen. And now, that peace that I invite you to use the water to dip your hand in, to be reminded of that peace. Dip your hand in and be reminded that you have been made a child of God in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And now you share that peace of Christ and the love of God and the communion of that Holy Spirit be with you all. As you share the peace this week, as you find ways to remember that God is present, even in the most difficult times and difficult circumstances and the most difficult people, we continue to give thanks for the peace of Christ that surpasses all human understanding. And may it be with you always. After you've shared the peace of Christ, we will continue with the gathering hymn, Christ, when for us you were baptized, found on page four of the bulletin below this video.
Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the first chapter of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forests bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from the 19th chapter of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. 
John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello, friends. You know, last week we heard two different uh, versions of how the Gospels began to tell about Jesus and Jesus' birth, and we saw beautiful images in our worship service. This week we hear from the Gospel writer who does not give us any indication about how Jesus was born, but he tells us about the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's how he begins the entire story, the Gospel writer of Mark. And the beginning, he tells, is related to the person who prepared the way for Jesus, John the Baptist. And then the Gospel writer tells us about Jesus' baptism. The way Jesus came forward, just like we were brought forward by our parents or we came forward ourselves, and we are reminded that God baptizes us with water and the Spirit. And so that's why we have the baptism font here. Maybe some of you were baptized here at this font. Maybe some of you remember. I know it took a long time before I remembered my baptism day, and it's coming up. It's at the end of January, and it's a very important day because it is the day that I was made a child of God through the waters of baptism. My sins were forgiven, and I, was, I began this pilgrimage of life uh, that we call the Christian life of following Jesus and doing our best to live out the grace we've been given. And so you'll see we have these symbols um, here in the baptismal font. You might be able to see the Holy Spirit, the dove, and then we have the words that were beautifully put in this mosaic tile be born of water and of spirit. And of course, we also have the beautiful symbol of the shell, and the shell that we use sometimes is used to baptize. Sometimes we use that shell to remind us of our baptism. And I didn't know if you realize that the shell is not only a reminder of baptism, but it's also the reminder of our pilgrimage, our journey, because there was a saint, the name of James, who used it to beg for water and for food. And there was always enough the size of a shell, no matter what size that shell was, for him to receive um, help from those along his journey. And so I want you to know that God is always with you on your journey, that even though there might be things that happen, things we say or we do that we call sin or we call our actions that turn us away from God or temptations that take us from remembering um, that we are to walk in God's ways and to share God's love. Whenever those things happen, we can always be reminded of our baptism. And that's one way is every single time we wash our hands, which we're doing a lot these days, we can be reminded of our baptism that we were born of the water and washed with the water and given the Holy Spirit to keep bringing us back to that journey of grace. We can remember by being reminded with our hand over our head and over our heart to remember that we were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
We can remember every time we pray and ask for help or give thanks to God. We can remember every time we ask our parents or our godparents or others who might have been there to tell us the story of our baptism so that you may hear over and over, just like Jesus did when the heavens opened and the dove descended and God's voice broke through to remind Jesus, just like God keeps breaking through to remind you that you are beloved. And together, we make up the beloved community. And with God's help, we continue on this journey together. And so I give thanks to God for you. Join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for these young people in faith. Thank you for the way they gather together to support one another each week. Thank you for being with them during this difficult time. Thank you for helping to remind them that despite some of the ugliness and hatred and unkindness found in this world, that you continue to put us on a path of compassion, of love, of peace, and of um, forgiveness, and that you'll continue to journey with us always as your beloved community. We give you thanks and we ask for your help in this work, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and have a wonderful week. Grace to you and peace, dear Water Life siblings. It's been yet another week when the sermon I started with got radically revised. I had planned to tell a relatively innocuous story about yet another move to a new house and the very first day having water troubles. Our move to Silver Spring, just like my move to Evanston 10 years ago, started with a reminder that water always finds a way. This time, instead of torrential storm water breaching my basement walls, it was from a poorly sealed shower stall down through a canister light fixture onto a hardwood floor and on down to the ground through a crawl space below. Not the kind of surprise you would want on your first day in your new home, but fixable. So far, the water in our new home is following the paths that the plumbers laid out for it. Sadly, this week, we got to see that hatred and violence also follow the simplest path that is laid out for it. Whether by a president or his minions, religious leaders or family members, we saw what happens when a steady diet of lies and deception and the evils of white supremacy are channeled into people's lives. This week, we remember Albert Schweitzer, the theologian, humanitarian, and peace activist, who said, what really matters is that we should all of us realize that we are guilty of inhumanity. The horror of this realization should shake us out of our lethargy so that we can direct our hopes and our intentions to the coming of an era in which war will have no place. I'm very aware that I serve a church, whether at this congregation or our larger expressions, that includes members who are all over the spectrum of reactions to this week's inhumanity. Some are ashamed and repenting of their support for insurrectionists. Some are holding steady, making excuses, and saying all sorts of whataboutisms. Some are saying, I told you so, and shrinking back. And some, while not surprised, are shocked and traumatized and numb. No matter that this occurred when so many are grieving and fearful for the quarter million U.S. lives infected each day this week by the coronavirus, all together, we are living in times affecting our collective, our community lives long into the future. In the midst of all this, today we hear the good news that Jesus humbled himself to first take in John's baptism of repentance. Yes, God in Christ Jesus, 
Even though everything we trust about God teaches us that he didn't have to, Jesus repented before he received the unique baptism for which he was sent into this world. I like to imagine that John reminded Jesus, as we are reminded, that both the ability to repent and the forgiveness of sins stems, and the forgiveness of sins stemming from it, are a gift from and a work of God. Both repentance and the forgiveness of sins are a gift from and a work of God, impossible for the human will alone. That's as Reverend Dr. Christian Johnson Largen writes. I believe the three renunciations that we repeat before we confess our faith in a triune God too often have been glossed over. Those are the renunciations that are only used when we have the sacrament of holy baptism or we affirm our sacrament of baptism together. These, my siblings, are an important no before we get to the yes of our faith, our trust in God. First, we renounce all the forces that defy God. We also renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God. And we renounce the ways of sin that draw us from God. This first three-part no is not something we can do on our own. This is why we are baptized joined into Christ's community. This is why we are baptized into Christ's baptism the church. As we all know, and as we saw the stomach-turning evidence on Wednesday, this is no guarantee that those defiant, rebellious, and powerful ways aren't present in the church, leaders and members alike. However, if we keep repenting and being returned to following Jesus' ways of humble service and solidarity with the powerless, the waters of rebirth allow us to begin anew. Jesus submitting to John's baptism before receiving God's is, Dr. Largen writes, fully in character with the whole of his ministry, in which he comes not as a domineering Lord, but as a servant who stands in solidarity with the poor and outcast. She also points out that Jesus used water again in this same way when, at the very end of his ministry in John's Gospel, Jesus washed his disciples' feet, commanding them to do the same with sacrificial love as the animating gift of the Holy Spirit. Love, not hate, not arrogance, not what about meism not violent displays of anger running rampant in words or deeds. Love as the byproduct of God's gift of grace, the forgiveness of sins, the water and the Holy Spirit always finding a way to renew, cleanse, identify, and send in ministry. As we celebrate today that we are each and all baptized into Christ's baptism, we also remember that the Holy Spirit's love doesn't just empower us to repent and receive forgiveness, but it also identifies us as beloved children of God, claims us forever by Christ, permanently seals us with Christ's cross, and sends us as ministers in this world, as daunting as it may seem in weeks like this one. This is so that we will remember that God doesn't call the equipped, but God equips the called. Just as creation didn't earn any right to be called good, God made creation each day and then called it good, the evening and the morning, both the darkness and the light. We are beloved because God has beloved us first. So beloved community, what does this mean for us? For us in the DMV where so much anger and violence are being directed, 
What does this mean in a church that is decidedly purple and will continue to be regardless of what, which political party holds sway over secular power? What does this mean when we are constrained by technology to communicate and our emotions, our intents, and body language can be so easily misconstrued? What does this mean when gathering together now will most likely continue to spread a harmful virus? What does this mean when so many of our helpers, our healthcare and protective services workers, are dispirited and distrusted? What does this mean when so many signs point to the powerful lingering effects of our country's original sin of white supremacy? Siblings in Christ, water life siblings. This means that despite how difficult the road ahead may be, we have a God who has brought us this far along the way and will not abandon us. We have a God who will keep calling us back to and empowering both our no and our yes, our three-part no and our three-point yes to the Holy Trinity. We have a God who, while we may sing of him being a beautiful savior, will get into the muck and mire of our sinfulness and stand before us as a non-violent truth and grace and peace incarnate, nailed to an empire's cross. We have a God who will keep equipping us for God's mission of sharing the good news of Jesus' love triumphing three days after his death on that cross. We have a God who will keep enlivening us as the beloved community, making the qualitative changes in our souls and the quantitative changes in our lives, preached about and taught by the Reverend Dr. King. We have a God who by water and the Holy Spirit will keep finding a way to show us as Bishop Tutu prays, goodness is stronger than evil, love is stronger than hate, light is stronger than darkness, life is stronger than death. So, water life siblings, go ahead, splash in that water, Trace that cross upon your forehead. Splash some more. Use an evergreen bough from your Christmas tree. Splash one another. Splash even more. Splash water life siblings. Now, where is that mop?
let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We will now have prayers of intercession. On this Sunday of the baptism of our Lord, let us offer our prayers for all in need, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Give us your blessings of peace. For the worldwide church, for those who minister in the church, for all who will be baptized this year, and for their godparents and sponsors, that the Holy Spirit will empower all the faithful for lives of service. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us blessing, your blessings of peace. For the waters of the earth, for the seas, the lakes, the rivers, for the wells that provide drinking water, and for the water that is piped into our homes, that God provide clean and nourishing water for all living things. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For the nations of the world and their leaders, for international efforts to prevent war and reduce violence, for the armed forces, for police officers, and for peacemakers, that God inspire all people to work for the harmonious well-being of others. Especially for our own nation, we pray for peace, justice, and a unifying government that serves all of the people. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For students, for teachers and school administrators, for parents educators, assisting their children in home, schooling, and for young people who are finding a way toward graduation. That as the academic year resumes, God give resilience to everyone in the search for education. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For all who are in trouble, want, or sickness, for the countless who are suffering with COVID-19, for medical workers, for people who are hungry or homeless, imprisoned or lonely, and for those we name here, that God grant health and wholeness to a world so filled with pain. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. For ourselves, that we rejoice in our adoption as members of God's family, and that now in this silence we bring to God our heart's requests. Let us pray. O oh God, give strength to your people. Give us your blessings of peace. Almighty and most merciful God, you are the mighty voice from heaven. You are our beloved Savior. You are the descending dove. We give you thanks for all your goodness and tender mercies. And we ask you to accept our prayers for the sake of your mercy today and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus keeps teaching us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We thank our music director, Nevela Otley, for the musical meditation music, Adoration. How appropriate on this day when we set aside time to praise and be in prayer and to give thanks for a God who is worthy of our adoration and praise. We give thanks during this time uh, for all the gifts that we have been given and the gifts that have been shared with this mission center at St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Silver Spring and the larger church. So please join me in the offering prayer found on page 11. Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. If you are worshiping with us before noon on Sunday, we invite you to join us for fellowship time uh, via Zoom. Uh, this Sunday, we are gathering together to say hello. We know there's a lot of Zoom fatigue out there, but this is something new for St. Stephen, and it's an opportunity for us to continue to practice using that technology and to find a way to share and to check in. So the Zoom link is found in the announcements um, beneath this liturgy in the bulletin. It's also found on our e-news, also on our website under the e-news tab. If you have any difficulties uh, getting onto the Zoom link, I hope you will call my cell phone number or contact our church council president, Roger Barnes. We look forward to having time together even in that uh, unique way to share, to check in. And if you have other ideas of ways that we can safely and in keeping ourselves and others in good health to share together, I hope you'll let us know. We will be gathering together for doing the annual meeting on January 31st, Sunday, January 31st, also at noon. 
and there will be more information sent out throughout the month. But if you were involved with or led a ministry in the year 2020, uh, you will be asked to provide stories and a report so we can gather those together and send them out. We have a nominating committee that's completed their work and we give thanks for those who have said yes to be nominated to serve in this coming year. And so we will be voting on those, uh, those people that are members of our church willing to use their gifts in order to lead over the next year or two. And so I invite you to uh, continue in through this worship, through the sending hymn, but receive this sending blessing. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in Christ's peace. Amen. And now, if you still have your water nearby, once again, remind yourself that you are a beloved child of God, washed in the waters of baptism. It is continually there for us to be renewed in God's ever-flowing streams of grace, justice, and peace. So please, after the singing of this sending hymn, go in peace, be the light of Christ, be the peace of Christ for all the world. Thanks be to God. Now we sing, Shine, Jesus, Shine, the words found on page 12 of the bulletin. Thank you. 